Hey team, this is Nathan from Rundering from <laughs> Hey team, this is Nathan from nutritiongeeks.com. Hope you're all having a great week. Today's topic I want to discuss is selling Herbalife worth it. A lot of people ask this question. I often get asked this question as well through email or on nutritiongeeks.com. People reach out to me, is it really worth it to sign up as a distributor and can I really make money doing this? Um, my answer without question is it is definitely worth it. But the, but the bad news is, is it does take time. It takes work. Um, network marketing is not a pyramid scheme. It is a very efficient way for major companies to distribute their products to other people by way of their distributors. And it's a business model that's been around since the early 50s, middle to early 50s. Uh, Amway was the big company at first. Uh, Herbalife started in 1980. And and it is definitely an efficient way for major companies to get their brand and get their products out there instead of having to advertise so they save money. Um, but is selling Herbalife worth it? Anybody that's working a full-time job or a part-time job definitely will understand what it feels like to work hard for linear income. They know that their paycheck is tied to their time. The moment you stop showing up for work is the moment that paycheck stops coming in. and. Of course, there's people all around the world that love what they do for a living. Um, you know, I've had many jobs myself that I thoroughly enjoy enjoyed, had great bosses, um, great companies I've worked for. Um, but that being said, there was always that nagging uh, sensation I had that um, I knew I had to continue to show up somewhere in order to earn income. What's great about being an Herbalife distributor is that we as distributors earn residual passive income, income that continues to come in for having worked hard one time. It's not linear income like the, that you earn at a job. If you're working a, a full-time or part-time job, you already know uh, there's only so many hours in a day that you can work too. You know, you and I, we get tired, we need sleep, we need recovery. Um, you know, we need some downtime in order to recharge and then go back the, the following day and start over again. You know, when you start as an Herbalife distributor, it's it's the opportunity to never have to start over again. Now, the like I said, it does take work. It does take discipline and motivation to be an Herbalife distributor and build your team to a point where you're earning legitimate income on a monthly basis. You have to be willing to talk with people either online or offline uh, in order to build that income. And so when you're working a full-time job or a part-time job, you already know your employer is only going to pay you for the work that you do. You know, they're not paying you for the work your coworkers do. So it's very limiting in that respect in the fact that you, you're only getting paid for, for the amount of hours that you put in on a daily basis. And like I said, you can't work 24 hours a day, neither can I, I mean, we need rest. Um, all new Herbalife distributors receive their own website from the company. So um, what's great about being an Herbalife distributor too is you can still work your full-time or part-time job and then build your fortune in your spare time. You know, you can work as little or as often as you want on your business um, and, and you're in control. You know, you don't have a ceiling on your income like you do as working as an employee. And that's whether you hate your job or you absolutely love your job, you still have a ceiling on your income. It doesn't matter how many hours you work in a day or how much you love your job, there's only so much money you're gonna be earning on a daily basis. And another big thing that, that the network marketing business model helps in, in, in helping employees is it helps you also to outrun the rate of inflation. You know, with more money printing that's going on, especially here in the United States of America with the, with the Fed printing tons and tons of money, uh, currency, not even money, real money is silver and gold. Um, but because of that, the rate of inflation, your, your dollar or your currency is purchasing power goes down. So you have to be willing to share Herbalife with other people on, on, on a daily basis or on a weekly basis at a minimum. Um, again, the more people you seek out to help, the more those people will seek out to help you. I mean, that's really what Herbalife is. It's a people helping people business model uh, revolved around aiding other people to get what they want first. Focus on the needs of others before your own needs and you will be a successful Herbalife distributor. So is selling Herbalife worth it? I definitely believe it is because there's a point where 
as your team gets bigger and you, you find people that want to either be customers, which we call preferred members, or they want to sign up under you as a distributor, which is a, an Herbalife home-based business owner, regardless how, how they decide to join under you, um, they're being helped as well. All new distributors and new preferred members receive a lifetime 25% discount on their products. So you're, you're not getting, we don't get our products at retail prices. We get them at wholesale prices at a minimum of 25% off. As a customer, if you don't have an interest really in being a distributor immediately, uh, Herbalife does make it very easy for preferred members to convert later to be a distributor if you want to. Now granted, not everybody's gonna wanna be uh, an Herbalife distributor, I totally get that. Not everybody wants to go into the business for themselves. Um, many people just enjoy working for other people and, and having a job that they love, but maybe they're either seeking another uh, stream of income. So a lot of people sign up to be distributors just to have that additional income coming in on top of the income that they're generating uh, from their job. So they do that that way. And then there's other people that just really are tired of living paycheck to paycheck. They're tired of, um, you know, showing up somewhere they don't really want to go to, uh, reporting to someone they really don't like maybe, or isn't treating them the way they want to be treated at their job. Uh, so they want to be free. They want to have time freedom. They want to have more time to spend with their loved ones. Uh, they're willing to put in the heavy work that's involved uh, to be an Herbalife distributor. So when I'm asked, is selling Herbalife worth it? I always say that it is, but you have to be willing to put in the heavy work. You have to be motivated and driven um, to talk with people online or offline. If you're introverted, then you you know, you know can still, there's other options to uh, build your business. Uh, you can start a blog and write about Herbalife products or our business opportunity on your blog and then link the website that the Herbalife company gives to you to your blog. Um, you can start your own YouTube channel like this and, and just talk about Herbalife, either you know our business opportunity or our products. There's a lot of different ways that you can build your Herbalife, your own Herbalife home-based business. And again, the more people you talk to, the more people you reach out to that wanna join you, the higher your chances of success to not only help those people get what they want first and foremost, which is the main focus, but also you, you start earning additional income the bigger your team gets. And the reason behind that is because you have more people that are buying and selling Herbalife products either as a distributor and they're sharing products with other people, but you, you earn a percentage. Uh, and like I go, goes back to, you're not paid for the work that your coworkers do at your job. Herbalife pays all of its distributors a certain percentage of each sale their preferred members and their distributors make. So because you reached out and helped them to get what they want, the company also rewards you back for helping those people to get what they want. So that's what the philosophy around being an Herbalife distributor is all about. Um, everybody has their right and, and to have their own opinion about network marketing. They do, there are people out there that believe it's a pyramid scheme that you know, only people at the top make the most money. Let me tell you, I was one of those people too, a, a little over two years ago as well. And let me tell you, it, your mindset and, and viewpoint quickly changes when you start seeing residual passive income commissions coming in on a monthly basis. It's very different to earn residual income than it is to continue to work hard at a job somewhere for linear income. You know, one type of income, linear income, the one, the type that you work at a job is tied to your time. If you stop showing up, your paycheck stops coming in. Whereas if you build your own Herbalife home-based business and you're willing to be serious and help other people and share Herbalife with other folks, you're earning residual passive income, income that continues to come in for having worked hard one time. So you can stop working, say, for a week on your business, and you're still going to have income coming in. That is the difference. So I hope this video on is selling Herbalife worth it is empowering, is motivational for you. It gives you some insight on the differences between when you're working a regular job and you're building an Herbalife business. Yes, you do have to work hard to build that build that team of customers and distributors, but as time goes on, it does become automatic. You start earning residual income, and that's be because you have a big team of, of customers and distributors that are purchasing product, and you get a small percentage between uh, 10 to 
of each one of their purchases. So over time, the bigger your team gets, the higher your income is going to go. Um, Herbalife is not sold in stores, so that's the reason why we all, as distributors or preferred members, sign up as a uh, under a sponsor. And I will be your sponsor if you decide you want to uh, join today as an Herbalife distributor or as a preferred member. Um, there are links below the all my videos here on the channel. Uh, definitely check out those resources as well, and the, the exact steps to sign up are below this video as well. Um, as far as prices, it's $94, a one-time investment of $94.10 uh, US dollars or the equivalent in your currency to sign up as a dis distributor and start your own Herbalife home-based business. And it's a one-time investment of $34.95 US, US dollars or the equivalent in your currency to sign up as a preferred member. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any other questions or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. And I look forward to seeing you on the team and uh, again, helping you uh, meet your objectives as either a Herbalife distributor or as a preferred member. I'll talk to you in the next video. Hey team, this is Nathan from RunDreamAchieve.com. Hope you're all having a great week. Today's topic is how to increase stamina for running at home. And stamina is tough. Stamina takes time, it takes effort. Um, I think more than, than anything when it comes to improving your stamina when it comes to running is you have to be disciplined. You have to be motivated. You cannot just be in this sport uh, just to, with one toe in and one toe out, especially if you're going after specific times, and most of you are. Um, I, I've learned over the years, too, that you know your results speak for themselves. So you either meet your objective or you don't meet your objective. And sometimes you just need some of that tough love. Sometimes, um, you know, hearing from somebody that's done something that you've wanted to do or run a specific time that you're looking for, um, just hearing that 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 advice and that motivation will will inspire you to get out the door when you really don't want to go. Um, you know, over the years too, when. Uh, when I was in school and when I was juggling a lot of other responsibilities, I was always driven and, and focused on what I wanted to do as an athlete. Um, and I, I feel like a lot of what I learned in athletics has carried over into other parts of my life. And, and you have that same um, characteristic as well. You have the same drive and motivation as, as you know, other successful people have. You know, sometimes a lot of us, you know, get disheartened and, and we start to second guess ourselves when uh, we don't see great results as quickly as we would like. Um, and stamina without question, building that stamina for running at home or, or elsewhere. Maybe you're training in, in another part of the world or maybe you're training in, um, in an environment that's not really conducive to, to uh, great um, training. I've been there before as well. Um, you know, even when I was stationed at Fort Campbell in Kentucky, uh, you know, nobody, my military unit really didn't care. I was out preparing for the 2011 Monumental Indianapolis Marathon. Uh, you know, I was at Fort Campbell. I was at a very high level base uh, where, the, you know, the mission was not running. So at the end of the day, you have to write down your goals. You have to visualize success. You have to visualize what you are wanting to do and be willing to get out there and put in the heavy work that's involved. And when I talk about, you know, uh, having been in, in environments where that, that weren't conducive to running success, um, you know, for an example, I remember going, uh, we were out at uh, doing a, a one week military exercise where we, out, we were out in the field and I was training for the 2011 Monumental Indianapolis Marathon and I had no choice uh, but to try to run while we were out in the field. This was very, very difficult. And I remember getting up at two o'clock in the morning, one morning, uh, and this was a few weeks out from the 2011 Monumental Indianapolis Marathon. I was getting up, uh, I had a tent duty, which basically, uh, you know, we were out in the field, like I said, I had to get up, it, the, the tent duty started at 5 a.m. So I got up at 2 a.m. to do an 18 mile long run uh, and here I was, it was pitch black dark out, the stars were out, the moon, that was the only light that was on the, the road that was out on, you know, we were way out, out of the base in, in at Fort Campbell. So my commander somehow caught wind of it that I that I had done a, uh, I had gotten up at two o'clock. And I think maybe some of the discussion from um, uh, the 10 duty that I started at 5 a.m., somebody had heard overheard it and he said, he comes up to me later on in the day and he says, Nate, 
why didn't you take a battle buddy, which is somebody that we, you know, uh, in the military we just call somebody that's uh, a team member. You always go with somebody else uh, when you're, you know, in a location that maybe you don't, that's not very well known, or you always take a battle buddy. So he said, why didn't you take a battle buddy? And I looked at him and I'm like, sir, who was going to get up at two o'clock to run with me for 18 miles? And so he, you know, he looked at me and kind of laughed and uh, walked off. So at the end of the day, it's up to you how badly you want to improve your stamina as a middle to long distance runner. It's not going to be handed to you. You're not going to, uh, again, anybody can run easy for a specific amount of time or for a few miles or a few kilometers, but it's an art form to run fast and to improve that stamina. So you have to be motivated. There's nobody that's going to hold your hand when it comes to this. Um, and, and as it was for me as well, you know, at the end of the day, it was up to me to either put in the work or just settle for mediocrity. And I was never interested in that as an athlete, uh, as well as a businessman or anything that I really do. I really focus on um, doing what needs to be done, whether I really feel like doing it or not. And you have to have that mindset. So in, in this question of how to increase stamina for running at home, work on training well below your goal race pace. And I say that because you have to get accustomed to high levels of lactic acid buildup. You have to get efficient at clearing that faster than it's building up. And the only way to teach your body to do that specifically is to run much faster than your goal race pace. Uh, again, there's many components to running fast over middle to long distances. You do have to train well below goal race pace, but you also have to run easy as well. So, so you can recover from hard anaerobic training. Uh, and building stamina and strength, that comes from doing those speed training exercise, you know, speed training, explosive type drills, uh, workouts and intervals, fartlek runs where you're running fast for a certain amount of time, slowing down fast, slowing down, you know, it's, it's speed plays. It's a funny word, but it means speed play. So you're changing up the intensities. If you're wearing a heart rate monitor, that, that might mean running for two minutes at 170 beats per minute followed by two minutes of running at 130 beats per minute. So very hard, aggressive running, very easy, relaxed running. Um, and, and have a plan. Don't just guess your training each day. You know, there's resources below all my videos and on rundreamachieve.com that are there for you for a reason. It's much easier to follow a plan that's already been built by somebody that's already done what you wanna do um, and than to just guess how to set up your training. And a lot of times uh, athletes go through much more heartache than they need to go through because they, they kind of just guess, well, I'll just do this today. Um, you know, if you're going to get in a car and go somewhere you want to go, you better have a map, at, you know, on hand. You better have a GPS um, app on your phone or something that's easier that's going to get you, uh, you know, I talk a lot in other videos too, use leverage. Okay, it's a lot easier to have a, um, a plan in place or a app on your phone to tell you where you need to go and just and it just you use that leverage instead of working hard and thinking that just working hard is going to get you great results working smarter is the key and we're, we often have not been taught how to work smart not only in athletics but in most of our most of our daily lives we've been taught to work very hard and we're seeing that from a lot of people around the world that working hard uh, in your job or working hard in, in other areas of your life doesn't always get you the results that you want. It's working smart. It's studying those athletes and those people that are successful and are doing the things that you want to do. You have to study them. Improving your stamina is going to take time. It's going to take patience on your part. It's going to take motivation. There's no way in the world you're going to just improve your stamina by running long, slow, easy, long runs. That's going to help you in to definitely build your endurance. But to improve your stamina when you're running and to be able to sustain that faster efforts over long periods of time, it's about improving the, the, your efficiency when you're running at tempo effort. It's staying relaxed when you're running fast. It's working on those explosive speed drills that, you know, all, over the years too, I didn't have a lot of overall leg speed, but I was always working on doing strides. And I talk about this in other videos too and on all my training plans and running courses. Doing strides. They're too short to build up any lactic acid, but over a long period of time, say uh, four months or longer, you're spending several miles at sprint paces. So doing five to six 100 meter strides on your easy days, two to three times a week, 
Think about that. Over a long period of time, you're spending t several miles at absolute sprint, explosive, fast paces. That is going to build your stamina on top of doing longer tempo runs, the long runs that we talk about, even easy long runs. That'll build your endurance, but it still builds your stamina in a, in, in a way as well. But stamina and strength come from consistent, persistent work on a long-term basis, making sure that you're staying motivated, having your goals written down, visualizing success, mental training. That's the big piece that almost most athletes neglect. We focus on physical training all the time, interval training, speed training, doing hill repetitions, long runs, uh, doing track workouts, always focused on the physical. But what about the mental, the mental side of preparation? That is the key piece. Billy Mills, the 1964 Olympic 10,000 meter gold medalist said it best. He said, the subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between reality and imagination. So right now, if you're a five hour marathoner, your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between you being a five hour marathoner or you know, a, a 250 marathoner. So it's not going to stop you from running, dropping that, um, that large of amount of time. It doesn't know the difference. So you have to trick your subconscious mind in a way of, you know, if you think that that's impossible, then it's gonna be impossible. But if you think that you definitely have a possibility to do it and you're willing to train long enough, it may take you several decades to do that, to go from five hours to 250, you can do it, but it's a matter of your mindset. It's a matter of your consistent hard work as well as more importantly, your smart work over a long period of time in order to get to your goals. So I hope this video was helpful in terms of how to improve your stamina for running at home as well as it where, regards where you're at. Always focus on your long-term goals as well as your short-term goals. Have them written down, visualize success, make sure you're training at paces at, near, or far below your goal race pace, as well as making sure you're jogging on those easy days so that you're recovering so you can continue to push your body hard on an anaerobic effort uh, and for, for a long period of time. Also focus on the 10 day rather than three week taper, okay? Going 10 days is sufficient time to taper down for a big race. So definitely to improve your stamina, work on the speed and work on the building your endurance. Also focus on the recovery and rest period as well. So hope this video was helpful for you all. Leave me a comment below if you have any other questions or concerns. Give me a thumbs up if you would, I appreciate it. it helps the channel grow. And I will talk to you all in the next video.